I want to bring the story that Daniel was talking about into a Ugandan context, but my intention is to point ourselves to action. And the Red Pass is one of the actions that uh, we have taken as far as the Cheney climate is concerned. The Red Academy is uh, about building a mass of uh, people who are knowledgeable about Red Plus in a way that they can be able to build capacity through training in ways that increase knowledge and uh, action around reducing emissions from forest degradation and forest losses. Yeah. We have realized the effects of climate change just recently, although it has been happening for a long time. Now, a training like this one will increase the chances of more Ugandans understanding what climate change is, and especially the role of forests in both helping to avoid the bad effects of climate change, but also to see the potential that the climate change has brought. The red activities that we now we are implementing are called Phase 1 Red Plus activities. They include the preparation of four elements. Element number one is the preparation of the National Red Plus strategy. Element number two is the preparation of the baseline, which will accompany the National Red Plus strategy, which is also called the Forest Reference Emissions Level. The third element is called the preparation of the National Forest Monitoring System, and uh, its purpose is to help independent monitoring for the strategies we prepare up there and also for the continuous monitoring of the baseline on whether it is changing or not. And the fourth element is the preparation of the safeguards, including a system by which those safeguards will be formatted and reported upon. To me, this was an opportunity to enhance my knowledge, skills and capabilities in the area of Red Plus because I've been mostly dealing with the, the policy aspects of RED. The other elements of uh, RED Plus, uh, I hadn't really put a lot of effort in it, so I thought this would be an opportunity for me to, to have more focus on them. Ever since we started this process, we've been attending meetings, workshops, we've been for COPs, but we get parts and pieces of the information. Yes, we know something, but you can't put it on a flow to see how it's flowing. So my expectation was, by the end of this academy, I should be very conversant with the whole process of RED, the different components, how they tie, the synergies. And the fact that all the four elements are interlinked, this was an opportunity to, you know, to engage with others who have spent more time on that and, uh, and get more knowledgeable. I had never internalized how the four, the NSAP, the FRAIL, the SIS, how they really interact and how each of our activities either feed or affect the other group. What is contained in a, in a forest is the carbon, but what is emitted is carbon dioxide. So we have to first of all understand this too. The data, for example, about the trends on land use and land cover was slightly modest. Now it is a little bit acute, and therefore it might require that we revise some of those. I have learned a lot, uh, starting from what it's all about, the, the various elements, the contents, and uh, the various programs under the RED uh, initiative. And uh, basically, uh, what has come out strongly, where I've seen the relevance uh, of our ministry, is uh, uh, this other component that we looked at today on uh, good governance, um, especially the principle of the rule of law. Uh, as Ministry of Justice, uh, we do also take part in the drafting of the relevant legislation. So it will be important really as we, as part of legal preparedness, uh, looking at the existing laws, uh, seeing whether they, they are enough, whether they may need to be reviewed or supplemented in any way. Uh, my line of thinking now has changed a little bit because to be honest, I was more like working in a, in, in a silo. But now I you know it is critical to link all the four elements. They all work together. I think we are going to build on, uh, on the synergies that we have established here. And uh, I see this particular training as an opportunity for the country uh, to get more people uh, appreciate Red Plus and the benefits that are associated with it. 
But uh, I also appreciate the fact that we, we are all coming from different institutions and agencies. So we're going to be disciples in the different agencies that we work in or institutions that we work in. The fact that we've married international experts or the international norms, what is expected, and the Ugandan perspective has really brought it home. It's been so practical hearing it from our own people doing it, even being able to pose questions to them, how far have we gone, and then we get it. The communities have now benefited from the Red Plus initiatives because they are looking after the forest. They are planting some tree seedlings outside on their land and they are being paid for that. And any other excess that is there, they put it in their forest to, to again put either nurseries or do patrols so that they are able to enrich the forest. Because of this forest, People agree to plant trees on their own lands outside. Yes, in our bed, we are raising it as a community to plant into the enrichment plant and the grass lands into the forest. Having it here was really, I think, the best decision I made because you get an opportunity to link the different aspects with the local aspects because we here we have you have a, a hands-on experience of the aspects in the modules with the reality on the ground because we have a mix of both national and international experts. The purpose Uganda proposed and requested for this support to undertake this academy was to create a critical mass of experts who understand how the role of forests and climate change they could be tackled and how the country can he undertake the elements agreed upon under the Climate Change Convention. Such a strategy, I think, is the way to go. Because when I look at uh, nationally and both internationally, the population is on increase. And uh, as a district, most of our public forests have been destroyed because of charcoal burning, timber, and everything because of this population influx. And if there is such an intervention, we are really very grateful so that can really build a strong capacity and a strong team to address these issues. I think this is the very way to go. There is need to build collaboration efforts that will enable people to understand uh, Ready Plus beyond just trees and forests. One, I'm a teacher and some of the courses I teach at uh, both graduate and undergraduate students relate to Red Plus and payment of ecosystem services. So to me, I've got a lot of teaching material. I'm optimistic that since many of us are coming from established institutions that, that have interest in Red Plus, uh, we shall be able to share the knowledge and disseminate it to the other people, but also even training other people. And the fact that the, the whole Red process requires legitimacy and uh, building capacity of everyone, I think the model is, is a suitable one for, for such an initiative. I congratulate participants and facilitators for completing a five days training that demonstrates the country's effort to be ready for Red Plus by 2020. Thank you.